I talk about that today, and I'll explain that I'm not a marketeer, but I'll explain the journey that I've been through having to learn these things whilst starting an open source and running an open source business. Um, open UK is the, uh, the industry association who's sponsored, part sponsored this today. If you are interested in being part of the open source, the free software and open source industry, then maybe you should look at joining. The idea is that uh, Open UK is a, is a central point for open source organizations, a place where companies can come and uh, access resources, information, and, uh, and also working with, uh, with the government. It formerly was known as the Open Source Consortium, which of course Mark uh, mentioned earlier and originally founded that. Um, so the, it's, it's rebranded because I think, I'm sure Mark would agree, the, the problems of today are different than the problems that originally uh, the Open Source Consortium set out to do. So it's still bu building on that foundation, but it's, uh, it's a new brand. Um, and the other point I wanted to make listening to uh, Mark's, Mark's presentation was that I share almost everything. I think I agree with all the points he made um, as well. So uh, I think it was very, very well put. There's a little bit of a overlap in some of those points as well, but uh, we'll go through that. Okay, so marketing is like creating software. You can spend a lot of money on marketing, especially if you're a techie, just like a marketeer spending lots of money on software, and have nothing useful at the end of it. And, and I think there's quite a lot of examples. We can all find examples of, of million pound budgets and, and no, uh, nothing useful at, uh, at the end of it. So, so I, I started an a, a organization up uh, 20 years, 17 years ago now. Uh, prior to that, I was a developer. So I started sitting in the dark room writing code uh, to solve problems. But with starting a business, uh, I, I had to learn how to pay the bills and put uh, food on the table. So you have to be quite creative when you come from an engineering background and you have to work out how to, how to do these things. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over that period working with marketeers, branders, all sorts of different people. I can't, uh, tens, maybe even hundreds of people I've worked with over this period of time to try and take the bits, to try and find the answer, and I've never found the answer. There isn't, no one's come to me and said, this is what you need to do but I've developed quite a lot of uh, experience with the, the different ways. So I'm looking to share that with you guys. I'm also looking to share with uh, other organizations. So my learnings through my private company uh, is what I'm looking to share through Open UK and help other companies build their businesses in open source and, and build that ecosystem up. So why marketing? So you might be a techie, you might have done something brilliant. You know it's brilliant, you know you're good. So what's marketing about? Well, obviously, that's communication. It's letting other people know that you're good. It's explaining what is it you do. If you can't communicate what you do, then you're unlikely ever to get a commercial success. And of course, if your outcome is, if you're looking for a commercial success, if you're looking to pay the bills using free and open source software, if that's an outcome that you're looking for, then uh, marketing is one of the pieces. There's lots of other pieces to the jigsaw, but again, today this is focusing on, uh, on, on marketing. So from the uh, Chartered Institute of Marketing, marketing is the management process. A, a lot of people will tell you marketing creative and all these other fluffy approach to marketing, but the official definition is a process. And so for techies, they, they I'm sure would be pleased to hear it's a process. It's something that can be understood and it can be planned. Uh, my view is it's making a promise. Marketing is about making a promise. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, and it's important that you, you live up to that. Matchmaking. So marketing is also matchmaking. It's, it's finding your, your, your equivalent partner, the person who, who can work with you and you can work with them. Uh, and it needs to be a, a, an honest partnership. I think you need to, to, to find your perfect customer. Why not? We could complain about customers who have not been very good and suppliers that have not been very good, but, but why not find our perfect customer? But you need to know what the perfect customer looks like. If you're going to find the perfect customer, you need to know what they look like. It's also about meeting business objectives because at the end of the day, it's, that's what is going to be putting food on the table is, is solving a business problem with marketing. Uh, but if you're going to solve a business objective, of course, you need to work out what that business objective is. So for some people, for small businesses, for technical companies, it can be very difficult to get a successful uh, marketing project. But actually, it may not be a marketing issue. 
it may come down to the fact that you, you need to be clear about what is it you're trying to communicate. Uh, and I think most of the, of the people I talk to are finding it difficult. Uh, that, that's the key problem. That they, they've not clarified what it is they're trying to communicate. A question I'm always asked, or the, the blur between marketing and sales. Uh, a sale from an accountant's perspective is a very precise thing. It's, it's a, the point where your goods are delivered, not where you start the work or uh, you receive money. So sales is, is, there's a lot of overlap. Your salespeople might do the marketing, but it is a different process. So if you go and Google, you want to get into marketing. You go into search the internet and say, how, how do I do marketing? Uh, there's lots of things you'll read, methods, strategies, all sorts of things. Um, B2B, business to business, business to customer, business to business customer, so on. Lots of things. Marketing mix is a very uh, popular uh, approach. Watertight, I found very uh, interesting approach where you have a funnel but you don't have any leaks so you get more out the other end. Um, brand Cascade, I found was pretty good. I also went, I, I uh, took part in a Goldman Sachs course with um, Aston University in Birmingham, which was also very good to, to learn what the gaps were and, and bring it all together. There's another 70 on Wikipedia, so it's, it's quite hard. From a, it's like a marketing person choosing a piece of software. You know, that's, that's what they'd see. Where do you start? So I think it's important that you find what works for you. That's the, that's the, the key point there. There's lots of activities you can do. And I think with marketing, it's, very, it, it's often you get caught up in the activities rather than the process. So you might be busy using Twitter or sending things out. You, you, you need to, to bring that together to a strategy. Uh, so there's, there's various different things here which I can talk you through my experience on some of these. Um, for me, referrals has been the very best route to business, without any doubt. Um, I don't recommend it, though, because referrals is very unpredictable. It's difficult. You can't go out there and make 10 referrals. The benefit of referrals is that generally someone's recommended you because you are the right person, so it's very cheap to close. Uh, it's, it's easy, it's more reliable, it's less work. So uh, as a smaller technical company, you might end up finding that you build your business by referrals, but it's hard to sustain, and if your referral network finds someone else to refer, then it can easily uh, dry up as well. Um, advertising, I think, has been one of the least rewarding activities. It can be quite expensive to get good press. I think it works good to support something that you've got already, to remind people that you're there, to, to help them realize that, that they should be talking to you. But to, to bring somebody in at the first instance, I think it's, it can work, but I think it's more difficult. You have to be quite precise with it. And again, this, this is focused more on the startups and smaller businesses and technical businesses. Uh, larger companies will have a person who's an expert in all these things and who knows exactly what to do. This is the people who, who don't have that, uh, that benefit. Um, events, I think events are, are, are generally, they can be good, but they also can be expensive. You can spend £15,000 on a public sector event to get a stand uh, next to all of the very large vendors and I, I, it would be unlikely, I would think, that you would get a lot out of that. Um, but there are other kind of events where, where you might get more traction. Um, direct marketing, actually, I found that works, putting things in the post. Because in the tech marketplace, someone gets something in the post in their hands uh, and it has a certain amount of, uh, of impact on the recipient. So, but it, again, it has to be very focused. Sponsorships work quite well, networking. Evidence, evidence-based uh, marketing is something that's quite new. Evidence is doing it. So rather than saying, I can provide a, a piece of software that allows you to get your content and publish it on the internet, you could just write that software, put it out there, and realize that lots of people like it, start using it, uh, and then, and, and you've evidenced that people are already using it, then you can follow up with services. So that's, that's a very good, in the open source world, that uh, has proved very successful for many companies. And uh, PR and press, uh, again, another Difficult one, you can spend a lot of time on PR and press. It's, uh, it's a long game, definitely a long game. I, I, I think it's easy to get distracted with that because um, it, it seems quite good fun. It seems you, you read other people's articles in magazines and it looks really good. But again, it, it, it's, it's a long route to, uh, to get a return on that. So like advertising, that's to back up things that you've already uh, got going on. So... The main question, which is the best one? There isn't a best one. 
everyone is different. So you'll have different factors. If you're, uh, if you're implementing solutions in your locality, then you need something that, that's going to focus on the, the customers in that physical location. Uh, your capability is different to the next companies. It may be that they have specific skills in one thing and you've got skills in something else, uh, and your financial resource as well. So there's lots of differences between organisations. There's, uh, there's not one way to do it. So we'll talk now more specifically about what you can do. So free Libra open source software, I think it was mentioned about licensing earlier. You, 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 Mike was mentioning you don't go and say, look, we can do GPL license or we can do Apache or MIT. It's just software. And actually, why do you want software anyway? You know, who, who cares about software? I, if software is not an outcome. There's no, there's no win to say, I've successfully created or implemented software. It's a means to an end. So it's focused on the customer need. It's working out what is it we're trying to achieve. That's, that's the key thing. What's the outcome? And if you can align yourself with the outcome of your customer so that your success is their success, that also works very well. But it, it is all about that, that, that outcome. Um, don't make false promises. It's not a magic bullet. You can write and implement really bad open source and cause huge problems with it, as you can with any other kind of software. So it's important not to make false promises, not to end up, uh, as something po uh, was pointed out in the, uh, one of the early presentations, um, so you, you don't really want to be telling people you can do this thing and it, it doesn't work because the industry will get a bad reputation and then it's harder work for everybody to try and repair that. Um, look what others are doing. If you think you've found someone who looks like they're doing the same thing, they might have the same on their website, the same list of services that you have. So you need to go into the details there. You need to look at what the differences are because I mentioned earlier different capabilities, different uh, geographical reach, different all sorts of different things. Um, so you do need to to look at the differences between yourself and uh, other people when you're presenting free software. And again, I think uh, someone mentioned earlier that they can help themselves. Mark said you can help yourself to the software. So it's just different ways of achieving that. So to make life easy for yourself, only market what you can sell. If you can't sell it, there's no point in telling people, no point in making the promise. It's a complete waste of money. Only sell what you can deliver. If you haven't got a way of actually delivering it, then don't sign the contract and then only deliver what it is you can then promise, otherwise you end up, the, the, the popular word at the minute is snowflakes, you end up with lots of individual things, it's expensive to manage and maintain. So if you want to do really well, then um, I summarise it down to, to these three key points here. And, uh, and if, if you can't make this circle work, then you need to really tune in what you're doing. The perfect customer. So why not have a perfect customer? you may ask, well, surely they don't exist. Well, but let's look at what, what, what they would look like. Who, what does the perfect customer look like? How much are they going to spend? So if, if you're a very small consultancy, you probably don't want to be going to, to BT or someone else. It's, it, you might find a consultancy piece of work, but you're not going to get a large project-managed development project, so they're not your perfect customer. Um, you might find someone else who, who will pay you a, a good day rate or a, base, a rate based on outcome who is a, a much better fit for you. Are you experienced in their sector? So if they're in hospitality, have you got case studies? Can you talk their language? Can you talk their, uh, in their unique terminology? Do you understand their needs? If you don't, then at some point, however much time you spend down that avenue, at some point, you'll just not get to the end of it. You'd have just spent time and money and be just a little bit older. And that's, that's all you'll get out of that. So you need to make sure you understand what they're trying to do. And who is their perfect supplier? It works both ways. So if, if they like the look of small, agile companies who can deliver a great deal of value uh, very quickly, that's really good. But actually, if they want to buy a process from someone with... Uh, five or six different people in that process managing it, then that's, that's a very, very different thing. So, so you do need to work out your perfect customer profile. If you don't work out who your perfect uh, customer is, then you're relying on luck that you might just get away with it. It's really important to, to work out the perfect customer. Uh, you need to know what your business objectives are because, again, if you don't know what your objectives are, you're definitely not going to meet them. So how many customers do you want? If you are a, a three-man consultancy selling something brilliant and you have a thousand leads come through your web form, that's not a good, that's not a success because somehow there's not, there's not a good, good mix there. So you need to work out 
what success looks like. And that's a key point with, with everything. It, it applies to marketing as well, but I think with any aspect of business, or even a project, anything you're doing, you need to work out what you're, what you're trying to get to. Look at the cost of acquisition of a customer. So if you're selling, again, a day rate, let's say a day rate of 500 pounds, and it costs you, let's say, 200 pounds of AdWords to get that customer and then two days of writing proposals, it, it wasn't a good cost of acquisition. So you need to look at what does it cost to acquire these customers. From a mar marketing perspective, knowing that helps you s choose how much money you need to spend on acquiring those customers whether it be uh, advertising or any of the methods that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and, and you need to back work that out from the work that you've done and the, uh, and the successes you've had. So how many can you handle? Um, can you deliver on your promise? That's really important. If, if you do a lot of work winning the deal and you don't deliver on it, then uh, you probably won't win another deal in that uh, sector. So we have to decide where we want to be, understand where we are, and plot the path. And again, just like a project, if you're building a house, you start off with knowing what roughly the idea of what the house is. You get an architect to tune the details in. You know what it is. You know where you're going to build it, and you build it. And, and again, very much the same. So a lot of these, a lot of these processes, we took by in the business. The way we we came across them is we said, well, let's address marketing. In fact, business like we do a project. We work out what we're trying to achieve, and then we work out how we're going to do that. And, and you can approach marketing that same way. It, it's not just having a, an arty person who just happens to know everything. It, it's very personal to your business, and it's a process. So content. Um, content's difficult in two different ways, either too much or too little. So too much content, you, you may be an absolute domain expert. You know everything about your particular area, whether you're a couple of guys or whether you're a bigger company and you might have pages and pages of it but your customer won't want to read those pages and pages what they want you to do is is distill it into something that they can understand that can be relayed in in a very succinct way um, or you might have too little content because although you might know it you never wrote it down it's just in people's heads so stories are a good way of, of solving this problem telling a stories a story a story might be a business problem that you've solved. And you, you might think, well, a case study, then I need to get it approved, I need to do all these different, different things, and, and it becomes a barrier. Writing a story to say, we started off with a Magento, we started off with a, uh, an ERP platform, we, had, we found these challenges, we brought them together, and, and we, we, we got to this outcome. You can create a story around it. That's a simple way for, of, of getting your technical content into very simple words. When you write it, give it to someone who's not technical and, and get them to rewrite it, get them to put their stamp on it. Ideally, someone in your customer domain. If you can find uh, someone who, who is in their sector and get them to look at the words you've used and help you choose it in, tune it in, you can come up with a nice story which is, which is something that that sector will value and see as interesting. You're then looking for someone else who wants to go on that same journey and then you can repeat that business again. Um, a lot of customers, a lot of companies don't communicate this to their existing customers. So they, they, they go and do the job, but they don't tell the customer that we can take you further on this journey now, we can do something else. So it's important, part of the marketing uh, mix is to make sure you communicate with your existing customers. That's, that's very important and easy to be uh, forgotten. So content is really the core of your marketing. You need, you need a valuable message that you want to transmit. Uh, and it also helps you establish credibility in that particular area as well. How big is our marketplace? Well, I don't know. Uh, I think if we went back 20 years, we probably, all of us would be quite surprised about some of the technical, the, the, the open source based wins of, of the current day. Um, and I think we're just scratching the surface. So I think we need to be thinking in scale of what did the introduction of electricity do to the marketplace to everybody's life. That's the, the, the opportunities. And, and they, when electricity came out, they weren't thinking about microwave ovens. You know, that wasn't on the list of things they wanted just then. They were thinking about light bulbs and, and really basic things. So I think with the free open source technology toolkit, the, the, what it's going to enable is many times greater than, than what we can see today. Um, so that, that we haven't, I don't think anyone's got a handle on what this is going to be yet, but it's certainly only going to go one way. So strategy, uh, I, I talk about strategy a lot. I think 
strategy is what you need. If you haven't got a strategy, you, you won't deliver the strategy. You won't ever get to that end if you don't know what it is. Um, Evidence-based, prove what you've done. Uh, if you can put software, if, you, if you've solved a problem for someone and you give the software away, put it on, on GitHub or uh, another repository like that, then, then it's there. People can come and try it out. And you might find that there's someone in the far reaches of the globe who needs that solving. They'll be quite happy for you to pay, to pay you to, do the, to, to implement the solution because it saves them weeks of learning what you've already learned. Um, SEO is easy to burn. If we all put open source as our Google uh, keyword, then we're all going to be paying Google £10 each for every time someone clicks it. So we need to be a bit more focused than that. We need to look at what it is we do individually. Um, that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, building relationships is, is really important as well. Make sure you, you know people, again, something you mentioned earlier about knowing the people you're working with, whether they are in a big corporate or even in a small business. M nowadays, more than ever, in the new uh, socially networked electronic society, I think people value human-to-human -human relationships more than they probably have done before because otherwise you're just lost in a sea of, of information and promises. So relationships is very important. Uh, there's a cascade. Someone uh, showed me a, an excellent uh, strategy uh, where you look at your business goals and you, you flow that all the way through in a, in a way that you can put into a calculator right back to every activity that you do in marketing. I'm quite happy to share that at some point in more detail. Uh, this is a very important uh, statement here. So we might have a big message we want to put out, but it's a lot for, a, for, a, for someone, a receiver, to digest our big message. So we can cut it down into very small pieces, one feature at a time, one benefit at a time. That's a good way of using Twitter or even in the uh, advertising, just, just little bits at a time. And people will absorb those a lot more easily. Um, they, no one's got time to read your paper on what you do, but little pieces will work. Uh, and if you present it to your perfect customer, they're more likely to be inclined to be interested in what you have to say because you've identified them as a perfect customer. Therefore, they are going to be interested in your message. Um, so the idea is then when you choose to approach them, you're more likely to get an, a, a, some kind of engagement. So what you can do, perfect customer profile. I think that's really important. Make sure your marketing partners understand open source. There's lots of marketeers who will promise you they can solve all of your problems. That there's lots of that. Make sure you only engage with people who really understand the nuances of selling, commercializing, selling services, making a living from free software. Because the software's free, you're selling the service. Um, yeah, so sometimes you, you need to say yes. Sometimes you have to take risks. Sometimes you have to just get on with it. If, if you're in a position where, uh, and there is a balance there. You, you don't say yes to something you're just going to be lumbered with forever. It can kill businesses. But, uh, but there, are, there are times where you need to get out of your comfort zone uh, and, and do other things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Understand your marketplace. And again, back to focus. If you know who you're talking to and you've segmented well, it's easier to know your marketplace. If you can't understand your marketplace, you're probably talking to a too wide segment, which isn't, you need to tune in a bit more. Uh, being honest, it's better to say, I can't do that, because then someone might say, okay, what can you do? And, and then you get a conversation. If you've got a perfect customer, you've just tried to tell, tell them they, you're selling um, a CMS, and actually that's not the problem they've got to solve, you're more likely to get a good, good conversation. You need to know who you are and what you do and who's going to benefit from it. This is quite an interesting thing. Past performance is no indicator of future performance. Um, so in the marketplace, you might be up against people who have got great reputations, but it doesn't mean they're going to win the next deal as well. So you, you need to know that um, it's, it's all about how you deliver, and you might find that you can uh, displace an existing company who has uh, some, some very smart uh, marketing and actually you've got a far better ch a chance of, of delivering it uh, keeping focus i mentioned experiment experiment cheaply don't blow the whole budget on one thing just in case it works but do lots of bits see what fight what you where you get traction uh, and it must work for you and your customer they must like what you're putting out you must be able to to, to sustain it um don't outsource your competitive advantage it's a bit of a business thing here 
uh, rather than just marketing, but it's, it's part of the marketing mix. And of course, marketing is a means to selling, in a, which is a means to delivering, which is a means to making the business work. Um, but if you outsource it, you struggle with marketing because you're effectively marketing somebody else. If everything you do is somebody else's deliverable, then, then that's uh, not so good. Um, existing customers, I mentioned that. Uh, don't compete on price. It's a race to the bottom. If we all start saying, well, my hourly rate is this and your hourly rate, it, like, rate is 10% less, we're only all going one way, and, and that's not, not good for any of us either. So actually, we should be focusing on our value. Uh, yeah, don't be blinded by the marketing of others. IT, it's a very interesting marketplace. I try and avoid using it, talking about IT at all, if I can, because I just don't like being associated with IT, whatever IT is. Um, it has a reputation of being the no department. That's, the, I think, the closest thing I can, I can find to a commonly understood way of thinking about it. It's, it's difficult, but um, there's lots of marketing, lots of promises in IT. Uh, buy our IT and it will change the world. But... Don't be blinded by that. It, it's, it's actually, if you know how to solve the problem, you may well be far closer to it than some of the big companies and their big budgets. Don't spread your efforts uh, too thinly. Spending, spread gunning everything. Five minutes here, five minutes there, five minutes there. You probably won't get any traction. You need to, when you experiment, try a few different things in one very focused place and see if you get traction. And again, that's around... Uh, short-term ac activities. If you don't follow things through, then you won't really know if it works or not. Know what you value you provide. That's the most important thing I would say. And this runs through the business, but comes out in marketing. Because again, marketing is a function of the business. So you need to know what it is you do. Y you might say, I do IT. Well, what does that mean? And, and if I was to sit in front of someone who says, I do IT, well, what do you mean by that? What exactly do you do? W when you get up, what do you do during the day? What do people like that you do? What value did you give? And it may, when you get into it, when you focus on this point, you may be surprised. You may think, well, I thought I was just selling a, uh, an ERP system like the next guy, but what you bring may be is sector knowledge. It might be the only person in that industry, in that particular sector, who knows how to implement that solution or, or, or in that particular way. So it's really important. Work out what, what your own value is. Why are you there? What can you do better than anyone else? Um, and everything else will come from that. That's it. Thank you very much.